This conference yes. will now be recorded. So, okay, uh, if I okay, if one command is executed and yeah. and giving continuous output, how how will I stop? How will it be stopped? So, how will I stop an execution in PowerShell? And I hope everyone can hear my voice. Is it audible? Is it okay? Is it audible, guys? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, so yes, how do you stop it? Is that, okay, can you please go on mute, guys? I'll explain this figure out. So if you go here into PowerShell and you know if you look at something that is continuously running, you also have a stop button here. Yeah. You also have a stop button out there. Uh Wamshi, can you please go on mute? So do you have a question? So you have let's say a stop button out here. So you can stop the script and the script will let's say get stopped again it will take a minute or two for this particular script to be stopped out here and once you once you have done that uh, the script will go into a stop state out here the partial <laughs> guys it's not uh, you know good to for you all to let's say stay on muted it will disturb a lot of people please stay on mute if you do not have anything please mind your mics out there uh, yes so month or something that person okay thank you so you want me to execute this one let's see this uh what is the mistake in the script uh what do you do is please send the script across to me on this particular email id called classes at devops at the gmail.com so that i can address your question and send you what exactly is the mistake uh, that you're doing out there because i need to let's say debug that script in the first place and understand what the mistake there is so please use this particular email ID and send the script across to me. And I'll help you out with that. Yes, anyone any more questions, guys? Uh, yes, please. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sir. 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 Yes, so the question here is that, uh, yes, prime numbers. prime numbers, again, you will have to write your own logic for prime numbers. If you want prime numbers, you'll again have to divide that number by two, say whether it is one, you can say it is even prime or odd prime number out there. So the math logic is different for, even, let's say prime. You can put something for, let's say the mathematic logic for, let's say the prime number out here, you can get that. But let's say if you want all the numbers from one to 100, which is even and odd. So what you have to do is firstly, you'll have to write all the numbers, an array of numbers. So the question here is that, uh, can I print all the numbers from one to hundred? And can I say whether it is even odd or also prime? Prime logic is something that you have to, let's say, write one more if loop out here, tell whether the number is, let's say, prime and et cetera. You'll have to, let's say, see what is the match for prime meaning it's divided by two leaves a reminder of one then it's a prime number out there so you'll have to put that and let's say get the number out there in that way so what you can do for even or odd just give you an idea for even or odd is that all the numbers from one to hundred even odd and etc firstly you'll have to write all the numbers i'll say numbers and if i want to write an array of numbers how do i declare an array guys what is add the rate open close this is the declaration of an array and what I need to do is I need to write all the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so on, so forth till 100, uh, which is not right. Because if I want to write 100 numbers, I'll probably take around 5 minutes to write all this array. But let's say if you come back and say, you know what, I need all the numbers from 1 to 1000, which are even or odd, then my job gets even more difficult to go ahead and write all those numbers out here, right? So, very simply, what I can do is to declare an array of numbers. I can say 1, the starting number dot dot 100 the last number if you do this what's going to happen is this if i just execute this line it gave me all the numbers from 1 to 100 without having me to write let's say the entire array so i have all these things from 1 to 100 and if i now execute this thing the dollar numbers will have all the numbers starting from 1 to 100 including both so if i say numbers all the numbers from what? 1 to 100 is what I have. So now I have this array. What I can do in this array is that now this is an array of numbers. This is not just one number. 
I have to process each and every number in this particular array. So I'll do a for each. I'll say for each. I'll say for each dollar number in dollar numbers. And I can say something like this. Dollar number or let's say something like this. If and I'll give another condition in it telling that if dollar number divided by 2 is equal to 0, then I'll write my condition telling that the number is even. And again, else I'll write the condition that number is odd. So I can say write quotes dollar number is even. And let's print it out in a different color, probably something like yellow. Else I would say dollar number is odd. I'll say write quotes dollar number is odd. And I'll say foreground color and I'll give a color something like red. So what I'm now doing is that I'm going ahead writing all the numbers even or not. Again, if you want a prime, you can also, let's say, put that logic inside for prime. But the only thing that I'm doing different right now is that I put a for each loop in front. Because earlier in the script, I only had one number. It's not an array of numbers. It's just an integer. Now I have an array of integers. So what I can do is if I execute this particular script. Okay. No, I did not select the entire thing. Getting this. Now it says, okay, fine. Uh, 70s, even 80s, odd and all that stuff. So you can uh, write the logic in that way. You can go ahead, write your own logics in that way, but you just need to use the loops. Again, if you look at this, I am only using a for each loop and an if loop. I could have also used the for loop out here. So you can do any kind of a looping concept. That's good enough. But you just need to know when to use a loop and when not to use a loop. You use a loop when you are processing an array. I'm not processing one number. I'm processing an array of numbers. That way I use a loop. And if you don't want an array, you need to, let's say, process one at a time out, out here as such. Yes, any questions here? Anyone, any questions? <coughs> Anyone, any questions still here that I can take? Right, so as I said, this is all Windows function. Until now, whatever we've been writing, whatever programs that we've been doing, these all come under the category of a uh, Windows partial script. This is all uh, Windows partial that we were doing till now. Now, what my intention is that I want to use all my Windows PowerShell logics and then apply it to something called as Azure. Because I am an Azure DevOps engineer and as an Azure administrator or a DevOps engineer, I am interested to implement my PowerShell knowledge on a cloud called Azure to automate the creation of resources like probably storage accounts, like resource groups, like another resource, like virtual machines and all these things. So I now want to start automating all these things out. So how do I do that is now, let's say what we are, let's say going to look at. Again, when you want to apply all your PowerShell knowledge to Azure, you need something called as Azure PowerShell module. What do you mean by Azure PowerShell module out here is that these are a set of commands that will help you talk to something called as an Azure cloud. Like for example, there is something called login hyphen easy account or connect hyphen easy account and all these things. But the thing here is that Azure PowerShell is not an inbuilt module with let's say PowerShell IC. <coughs> PowerShell IC doesn't come with Azure PowerShell. It doesn't really come with Azure PowerShell out here. You'll have to do some installations. You have to let's say go ahead install things out here and etc. Now in order to do that installation again, uh, my system already has all the modules that I need. So I've installed all these things and it'd be very difficult to uninstall all these things and reinstall it. So what I did is that I created own, my own machine out here. I use something called as a virtual machine to go and do a lot of software installations and etc. So just treat this as my machine. Let's say yes. Just treat this as my own machine. This is a virtual machine. We'll see what a virtual machine concept and all these things in a different class out there. But 
This is simply a Windows 10 operating system that is running on the cloud. And it also has PowerShell installed on top of it. Uh, let's minimize this a little bit. The screen is a little bit much for me to say. All right, so this is what it has right now, and this is normally our PowerShell what you see in your systems. Now, firstly, in order to understand whether your system already has a PowerShell module or not, what you do is go to the C drive of your computer. inside which uh, you have a let's say folder called program files inside which you have something called as windows powershell it's a pre-installed program so you'll have this every system that comes with windows 7 and greater will have this one go inside this particular folder you have something called modules okay now since i went ahead and installed something called this one now let's see this we have all these things called Azure modules and all that are installed. But the thing here is that I installed something called Visual Studio and then they got installed out here. But when you open this folder, you will only see these four folders out here. These four or five folders out here that you will normally see out here. This is the only thing that you'll see. You won't see all these things out here called Azure RM and all that stuff. Also, let's close this out. If you look at this button, there is something called show add on commands. Just click on this. And these are all the pre-installed modules. The pre-installed modules that come with any PowerShell out here. But if you look at my system, now this is a different system out here. But if you look at my local machine. And if I click on that particular command palette, it will take me a minute to open that out. And I'll show you how it looks like in my computer. Uh, do you see I have something called what az.accounts, az.aks, advisor and all that stuff. These are all the modules that I'm talking about. AZ here stands for Azure. AZ here, let's say really stands for Azure up here. So then how do I install this? Out? How do I make sure that my system has all these things? Out? In order to start or in order to begin the installation, the very first requirement is that you need to have a PowerShell that runs a version at least 5.1 or 5.1 that's the version of PowerShell that you need in order to know how the version is or what kind of a version of PowerShell that you're running just run a command called dollar ps version table the dollar ps version table here will give you the version of PowerShell that is installed on your system and if you run this you see I have what 5.1.1.9 something like this i'm not really worried about this 109 something like this all i need is that my version to be greater than or equal to 5.1 and did i do any installation no any system that comes again with windows 7 8.1 8 and if you have a genuine operating system this version will be pre-installed and this version will come along with your operating system you don't have to do anything as such so this is the first prerequisite before I go ahead and install something called this PowerShell. Second thing is that every PowerShell module or every PowerShell, let's say window, something called PowerShell ISC and everything, it comes with something called as an execution policy. Execution policy decides what kind of a script you can execute how you can execute that script can you really execute something or not something it, it you know kind of decides those factors out here firstly let's do one thing i'll say to see what is my execution policy or to get what is my execution policy i'll run a command called get hyphen execution policy it's execution policy out here so if i do just do let's say run this out my execution policy is what unrestricted this is what i need this is what i need my powershell to let's say say that it is unrestricted in your case it might be restricted or it might be something like remote signed all signed unknown and all that stuff it might be multiple things out here you need to modify your execution policy to whatever it is and get it to unrestricted how do you modify something again again i'm saying to get something in powershell it is get hyphen to modify something in PowerShell, it is set hyphen. So this is to get 
and to modify i'll say set hyphen and i want to set what my execution policy i'll say execution policy space hyphen it's requiring something called execution policy parameter of it i'll say space and there are these many execution policies called all sign bypass remote sign and everything i will put this to what unrestricted if your system is already unrestricted you don't need to run this command you don't need to run this command if your system is already on unrestricted but if it is not please go ahead and run this out it will ask you do you want to let's say go ahead protect this one and etc i'll say yes to all and very importantly if you want this command to successfully run open powershell in an administration mode powershell in a normal mode will not help you how do you open powershell in an administration mode again just click on powershell isc and here you see something called what run as administrator when you click on this it will probably ask you for your laptop password if your laptop is password protected give your password and you should see something called administrator and then windows powershell you should be running powershell on an administration mode if you want to install something if you want to change something in the system out there so the second prerequisite is my execution policy to be at unrestricted and how do i check my execution policy using a command called what you get hyphen execution policy to check it set hyphen execution policy hyphen execution policy to what change it to unrestricted this is what i do and <coughs> just before we go ahead and install the powershell module let's do a simple google search and i'll say install az modules powershell so i just type in this called install az module powershell and the very first documentation talks about how do you install it just go there let's understand what you do here firstly it's telling requirements <coughs> it's telling you should have powershell something like this and all that stuff and it is telling run this command called what ps version table then it is telling you know what uh, the execution policy set it across then scroll down then it's telling installation install module name of the module and this one this is the command it is asking you to run so i'll copy this up it's telling what install hyphen module space hyphen name az is that meaning azure out here scope is the current user repository and all these things i'll just copy this out i'll go into my powershell console after knowing my version after setting the execution policy to unrestricted as an administrator i am running this line of script which i just got from the documentation again this is the link for the documentation out here if anyone is interested please you can go ahead and read this out so i'll just paste this link here in this particular session please uh, you know send it across on the whatsapp group that will help people around who are not a part of it so let me come back into the machine so i just copied this out so you have a copy button here i just copied this out i just come back and what i do is i'll just select all these things and i do an execution and it's now starting to install or it's now starting to let's say get all the powershell modules from it. So what it does right now is that now it comes up with something called a prompt. It's telling you, do you want to install this or not? I'll say, yes, I want to install this out. And after this is done, it says, okay, fine. I'm downloading something called a new Git. It will download this out, a very small software to go ahead and let's install things out here. And it says completed. And after this, it should start your installation. Again, your installation can take around five minutes to let's say 30 minutes. It depends upon the system that you're using. And this is what you see. It's installing all these things called what az dot something az dot something and all these things out here. Yes, uh, already installed. It's saying az accounts already installed and all that stuff because I already have a module basically installed on top of it. So shouldn't be an issue out there. Still want to install this use something called another top release. And one thing, uh, I already have some modules installed. So I already have a few modules pre-installed out here. So what I'll do is I'll use one more command here called uh, it's come allow clobber which means that it will overwrite my modules if it's already present so it will just overwrite this out so just in case if you get that error please make sure to run this particular parameter called allow clobber out here 
I'll just go ahead and run this out once again. And let's wait for around two or three minutes for this to get installed out here. So this is one way of installing your PowerShell modules. This is one way, uh, which is the most preferred way. Most people, let's say, go by this particular route to go ahead and install the PowerShell modules. But I have observed in some systems that, you know, even though you run this all and even though it runs out, the module sometimes doesn't get installed. You know, for some reason, the module doesn't get sometimes installed. The other option that you have is that just scroll down. You have other installation options. Just scroll down out here. You have something called offline installation. You have something called download Azure PowerShell MSI. Just click on this. It will tell you requirements. It will tell you the same thing out here. And it will ask you to visit a website called github.com, something like this. Just go here. I'll just directly give you the link to it. Just scroll down all the way to the bottom. And there is something called assets. Just go here. There is a file called .msi. If you want, I'll directly give this link to you. I'll just say copy link address. I'll directly give this link to you all in this particular chat window. And please use this. If that install module command is not working for you, if that install module command is not working for you, please use this one. What you do here is just download this out. It will download something called as an installer. Just do a double click on this one. And it will now start installing Azure, Azure for you. The most easiest way to install it out. But please make sure that before you begin this installation, your version is 5.1. Your execution mode or your execution policy is unrestricted. So either you can use the method A, which is using, let's say, a simple script called install hyphen AZ modules and etc. Or you can use a method V. Once you do this, just go back into your folder and you should see all these modules installed called AZ. This AZ and all these things that are installed on your, let's say, inside your computer. This means that PowerShell is actually installed and PowerShell is good to go. And in the bottom, even this is done. Even this is parallelly installed and all that stuff. So you can either use this method, wherein I'm using something called what? Install hyphen AZ module and I'm just going ahead and installing this particular module out here using this particular PowerShell script or you can use a method to going into this particular GitHub repository and getting something called as the MSI and installing this out. So if the first method doesn't work, please go to the second. You can, you can choose, let's say, whichever method that you can install. I'm good with that. <coughs> you don't have to, let's say, stick to one, let's say, particular method as such. Yes, any questions to you that I can take? Anyone online, offline? Any questions to you that I can take with the installation of PowerShell modules? <laughs> I don't have a 5.1 version mm -hmm. in the system. Uh, if you again don't have 5.1 in your system, the issue is your operating system. What you have Managing to do, you'll have to upgrade your OS. You'll have to, let's say, run updates on your OS. Because PowerShell cannot be directly updated. PowerShell is not a software. It's a system. It's a system application. So it needs to update along with your operating system. So check for your updates. See whether your operating system is up to date. The last option is to change your operating system entirely. You know I would say uh, it's good to have Windows 10. It's good to have Windows 10 because Windows 10 supports a lot of features that PowerShell needs. So Windows 10, Windows 11, anything about that is good. Yes, any more questions here, guys? Anyone, any questions that I can take through here? And how do you install this out? Again, just do a recap. Uh, this is what I did to install it out. Firstly, I need the version to be 5.1. Anything above 5.1. So version is greater than or equal to 5.1. The execution policy to be in unrestricted. And either use method A or method B to install the modules. You can use any of these methods to go ahead and install the modules. And once after the modules are installed, let's see how you can use these modules and all that stuff. But yes, any questions still here? Anyone, any questions still here that I can take? So the problem here is that if you put execution restricted, you won't even be able to install the module. The module installation will itself fail, telling that the execution policy is restricted. So I won't be able to install the module and all these things. And you won't be able to, let's say, run scripts. You won't be able to run any script and all that stuff. It Correct. It won't give you any proper output and all that stuff. So that's the issue when you have execution policy as restricted. 
without distributing the data that in previous one. So there is some programs we did on some steps. In my system, it is already understood. It is already understood. So when I bought the system, I, the first thing that I did is went and changed my execution policy to understood. In my system, so this is my partial rate. No, I don't have an account actually. Mm -hmm. I want to retrieve modules. Okay. I want to run the scripts. Script. Correct. You, it might be unrestricted already. It might be unrestricted already or something else like that. You can you know kind of check that out too. So in optimization, you have to use the internet. Yes, in organization level also this is the institution. So that IT team will be No, IT team will not install it. You will have to install it. You will have to do it by yourself because uh, IT team will just give you the initial laptop. They won't install PowerShell modules, Azure PowerShell modules because that laptop might be used by an AWS engineer or an Azure engineer or someone like a QA and etc. Who doesn't need, let's say, PowerShell modules at all. Who doesn't even work with PowerShell, right? So IT team doesn't install it. Uh, we will have to install it on, on our, our behalf. So where we use all these modules? Uh, where we use all these modules, that's where I'm getting down to. So that's where I'm actually getting down to is where we use all these modules. We use all these modules to interact with Azure, to start interaction with Azure out there. So let's do that. Let's. So you just of using that run as administrator for this installation. You can use it for anything. Yeah, you can, you can do that. You can use run as administrator for anything. So let's go back into this machine and let's now since the PowerShell module is installed, now AZ module is installed, the installation is done. Now how do I use this? Let's say how to use this. Where do I use this? Uh, I want to use all my PowerShell modules that I installed to interact with a cloud called Azure. Now when you go to let's say portal.azure.com, what is the first thing that you do? Login. You give your credentials and it's the same thing I do with publisher also. In order to do the same thing out here, I'll run a command called connect hyphen. And after that, do you see all this is loading for you? Called AZ account and etc. If you do not have the module, you don't find all these things out here. If you don't have a module, you will not even see all these things. I'll say connect hyphen what? AZ account, Azure account. Connect to Azure account is what I'm telling my publisher to do. And I'll run this script. As in when I run this, it's now telling, okay, fine, uh, great. I will let you connect to Azure account. Give me your ID and give me your password. Same your Azure account ID and your Azure account password. So let me give that. I'll give my Azure account. And after I give my Azure account, my account is protected with, let's say, MFA multi-factor authentication. So I will get a OTP to my mobile number. So I'll just use that to, let's say, log into it. So just give me one quick second out here so that I can log in here. Right, so I'm now logged in to my account. Uh, so in your case, you might get a password or something like that. And this is the error that you get. The very first time you log in, this is definitely an error that you actually get out here. What does the error say? Can anyone, let's say, read this out? Let's see. Warning. Unable to acquire the token with an error, something like this and everything. And it's also giving you a solution out here. If you look at this, uh, warning and all that stuff. Unable to acquire the tenant with the error. You must use what? The tenant by passing something called as a tenant ID. It's asking you to, let's say, directly log into that particular tenant. 